Hey guys, it's uh, Chris from Fiscal RC Garage. Uh, this is going to be a little, uh, I don't know, recap of uh, the last run I did. Um, and some uh, some parts came in, some goodies, some future projects, and uh, more upgrades. You guys know how it goes. Um, so this is the one I had in the video. Uh, this is an OBR um, uh, G340 read. Um, it was running 1955 gears. I just changed the gears. I'm gonna run uh, 1856. I'm gonna see how that goes. Um, I don't know. I love this thing. It ran really good. Um, and I gotta put some new tires on the rear. They're just sliding all over the place. But um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but basically, sorry I haven't did uh, done this update video in a while. My wife's uh, an RN, and obviously with uh, COVID-19 going on, she's pretty busy, and, you know, I got kids, I'm still working, you know, so, so like I said, this is just going to be a little uh, recap of the last, like, three running videos, and I don't know, the last, the last, uh, this video was full length, um, and then, uh, the Vecta and the 5B, for some reason, my phone went to, like, slow motion, like, halfway through it. So, I ended up trying to, like, you know, delete some of the video out. So, that's why those were so short. Um, but let's let's talk about the Vecta. The Vecta is the one that's going to get the, uh, the big upgrades. Um, it's an OBR uh, G340 read. I don't know if you guys remember from my last, whatever, going over that. Uh, it's basically the same motor as it's in this one. Um, the only things I have, I have done different, um, I put an Alimat pipe on there. I had a Bartolome pipe. I'm going to try the Alimat pipe now. Um, the last one I did, I did put on IRP links throughout. I don't know if you guys can see them, yeah. Throughout the vehicle. Um, I mean, obviously that's no performance gain, but, uh, it's heavy vehicle. It makes it really easy to adjust stuff, you know. Um... Like I said, this is a OBR G340 read. Uh, it's not a signature. Um, I mean, I don't even remember if they had signature when I got this engine, to be honest with you. I don't know, anyways, oh, that's also. I had a 990 on there. I'm trying the uh, 1107 on there now. That's how it was in the last video. Um, and it's running 1823 gears on the Vertigo setup. I don't know if you guys can see that in there, but uh, I'll let it rear. Let me get down in there. There we go. It's got the Vertigo set up, uh, all three pieces. Um, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. It's hard. To, it's it, it depends on kind of how you, where you run and how you run. Some people like um, low mid. You know what I mean? Um, you know fastest crap out of the hole, you know, mid, I, where I run, it's a huge field, I know that's only a little portion that I do the videos on, um, but, like I said, it's a big field, so I like to have a little bit more top end, and I'm just not feeling it on the Vecta, I mean, the Vecta is kind of hard because it goes through, um, a slipper clutch, like, it's a lot of gear reduction on the Vectas, you know, compared to like a Baja, you know, it's it's two gears than the than the actual internal diff gears. You know what I mean? The Vecta's got a lot going on, um, so you get a lot of gear reduction there. So you lose a lot of power going through there. Um, at least that's my thought, anyways. Um, so anyway, so what I'm going to be doing to this. I haven't ran it yet since I've done the minor thing. Um, I got rid of the hubs put the vertigo they are one degree toe zero camber so basically what that means let me just show you so before it was like that so there's a lot of drag now this pretty much sets it up pretty much straight basically all rubber forward you know what i mean not on uh not like how it would be like that. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it's it's pretty noticeable. So, so I put those on. Um, they only go on the rears. 
And then I put the Vertigo lightweight wheel hubs. I'm telling you, these things are crazy. All four of these don't even weigh what one stock one is. I'm telling you, the stock ones are like steel. Um, I think I have them around here somewhere, but I mean, I have weigh them, but this is just with my hand, you know? I don't know that. But, uh, and then I ran it with the um, Proline uh, trenchers over there. Uh, those ones right there. I don't know, a lot, a lot of slipping, but like I said, this thing's a beast out of the hole. It's just, for me, it lacks a little top end compared to all my other vehicles. Um, but like I said, it just depends where you run. If you're in a smaller area, this thing run like a rape tape. But for me, like I like a little bit more top speed. Um, so anyways, I'm really surprised at how light these are and how heavy the, 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 fa the factory Kraken ones were. I'm telling you, all four of these don't even equal one stock one so so that should help and then uh i don't know i put these on these are uh mad max giant grip um like i said because the trip uh trenchers i don't know they just didn't do great in the grass for me a lot of slipping i don't know if you guys saw it in the video but uh a lot of spinning but uh i'm a big fan of hostile tires and obviously you know you can't really get hostiles anymore like these are hostiles those are hostiles these are hostiles these are hostels. But if anybody, here, here's a little update, but if anybody's looking for a hostile tire, these Mad Max, I'm telling you, they feel identical to the um, hostile tires. And they're way cheaper too. I think they're like, you know, 29 bucks for two or something like that. But uh, really nice tire. But I haven't tried it yet out with this, just like I said, because my wife's working all, all the time. And, you know, we had Mother's Day and then, you know, like I said, I'm in Illinois, so the, you know, the weather is just starting to get nice. But we've been getting a lot of rain, so, so I haven't tried it out with this. Um, but before I show you the the other goodies that I'm a, unboxing or whatever, actually I already unboxed them, but I'll show you what I got for that. Um, but also a recap on this. Uh, this goes back to like the same thing, like uh, no top speed when I. When I got this thing going, I had uh, uh, 2062, which I think I mentioned before in my last video. I was not a fan of it all, at all. I don't even think I'd be a fan of it if I raced. Um, like no top end at all. Like just as soon as you gas it, instant throttle, that's it. Like no gains, nothing. So uh, in the video, you guys saw it run at uh, 2158. Um, and man, I'm happy with this thing. This is an OBR G340, but it's a piston port. Um, and Sean and Dan did a little extra head work to this. Um, this one I'm running a 990 carb, but I'm really happy with the speed with this thing. I'm really happy with this thing. Um, like I said, last year, you know, I got it out a little bit with the, uh, the 2062 spur. And, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a 58 spur guy, I guess. Um, but yeah, this thing ran good. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I've had, I don't know if I showed these last time. I've had these for a while. I just never installed them. Graffili. Um, mud guards. I got them on front and rear. And like I said, this is just going to be a little recap. Because I don't know how many people uh, watch from the beginning of my videos. You know, from when I started this. But it's got an Alamat pipe. Um, two high-tech 845 servos. You know, so forth. Um... But yeah, man, this thing, I'm really happy with this thing. And, uh, all right, so let me show you some stuff I'm going to do. I don't know when I'm going to do this. I got some time off in uh, June. Like, what kind of sucks is the weather's starting to get nice. I like doing my bigger projects in the winter. You know, you're kind of not missing anything, you know. I like to run them more in the summer. So I don't know. I'm going to say I might start this in June. I don't know, because I got I got a week off in June and then in July. So I might do this project then. So eventually this thing will get an RC Max motor, probably a 50 GT. I really like that motor. I think it's a good uh, power, you know, size and power for this thing. Um, so in the meantime of that, I've been trying to 
figure ideas how to do some like weight reduction on this thing. And like I said, I put those uh, wheel hubs on. I mean, that's, you know, that's not tons, but every little bit counts, you know. Not that I'm drag racing this thing by any means, but, you know, for field runs, less weight, less drag, so forth. So, um, also, I don't know if you guys saw I, I'm pretty sure I saw that last time. I got the RCMX front diff in there and the Virgo. Like, it's, it's built really good. Built really good. Um, but without upgrading the engine, I mean, I can always send this out to get a signature series. But everybody, I can, see, that's one thing. I don't know. Like, this is dyno, whatever, at 9.4 horsepower. I don't know if the signature is 10 horsepower or not much more. I don't know. So I could always do that. But in the meantime, I, you know, I figure out, well, let's try to figure out some, some ways I can uh, get some, uh, lose some weight, basically. Because this is the heaviest, heaviest vehicle I have. I think I weighed it. I wanted to say it was like 48 pounds, I wanted to say. Somewhere in there. Don't quote me on that, you know. Um, but I want to say it was like 48 pounds. And the stuff that I got that I'm going to show you guys. Um, if my, well, my math is right. But in realistic numbers, I'm hoping to lose about two pounds, if not a little bit more. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but when something's 48 pounds, 9.4 horsepower, you lose two pounds, it's noticeable. You know, just for instance, like this Baja is way faster than the Vecta and they have the same motor. You know what I mean? This obviously weighs, I don't know, 10 pounds lighter, easy, I would say. So, so let's just go over some stuff that I got. Um, I did get this, I hope, they, is it, I hope there's no glare. Um, I did have problems with my drive shaft uh, pins falling out. Now I do have the, I don't know if you can see in there, the version two. So I haven't had an issue with it since I put the version two, but I've only ran it once since this. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that in there right now or when I start doing my project. But anyways, I got this new, this is a, uh, I don't know, it's like their version three or whatever. It's a CVD drive shaft. It's supposed to, you know, make sure the pins don't fly out, blah, blah, blah. So I picked that up. There's one thing like with uh, cracking parts, it's like, you know, they're never usually in stock. Um, <clears throat> so you got to kind of pick up stuff pretty good. Um, but it's kind of like the low C's with the drive shaft. I'm sure you guys know the metal rings. Basically the same thing. Um, I don't know what this one weighs compared to the stock one, but uh, I don't know. I picked this up. And then I picked up, uh, this is also a version two center drive cup set. Cause I did notice um, the ones I have in there, they do loosen up pretty easy. Um, they do a little different setup. Like you got the set screw, but then they have another set screw in there and they always loosen up. I mean, I put red Loctite, I put green Loctite, I put blue Loctite, it doesn't matter. They all loosen up. Um, it's usually the one on the trans side. I don't know if you can see it down in there. Actually, let me get my light. Uh, it's usually that one in there that loosens up. See how, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do. But there's a little set screw there, and there's another one like the one that's in uh, this package. So the, the little one locks this. And with this style, you don't use it. It's longer. It goes all the way through. And it's uh, I don't know, it's got little rings too, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, I got those. Um, all right, let's see here. I did pick these up, uh, the Vertigo uh, candy levers. Um, right now, I just got the the stock ones on there. That's basically these, and these bad boys are pretty light, but you get more adjustability out of these. I didn't necessarily get these because they're lighter, but they are definitely lighter than the stock ones because I had the stock ones out when I put the um, lemon straps in. Um, so we got that. Um, this is kind of going for what I'm going to be doing. Um, the rear shock stop. I already have the bigger ones in there now. Uh, Vecta had a problem where the shocks were popping out of here. So I picked up a new one of those. Uh, JS Performance. Great stuff. 
Um, I did pick up uh, another JS Performance. These are for the uh, the trailing arms, the lower rear trailing arms. Uh, they're basically a nice, real nice heim joint. Now these are definitely going to be heavier than stock. Um, I mean, these things are beefy. So those will replace these, and then the one up in there. Because um, I've seen a lot of them where they round out. It's just it's you know it's plastic and a metal sleeve, just like any other joint. So I'll replace those. And like I said, the main thing of this is to lose some weight. I know, like I said, two pounds doesn't seem a lot, but uh, you know, you talk to a racer or whatever, it's a it's a difference. So the first thing I picked up, and I want to also do a shout out to uh, and a thanks to Mike Taylor at RC Max and Bonehead RC. Um, this is carbon fiber. This is for the front shock tower. So with these part, these are the parts that they say I'll lose. Like if the math, you know, I'm not saying put it on the scale, but it should be around two pounds. Um, beautiful piece. Uh, I was a little skeptical at first. Just because carbon fiber, you know, like, um, you know, they're made, it's made to give, you know what I mean? Like you ever see carbon fiber bicycles, they, they give a little bit, but, uh, this thing is super nice. I don't think I'll have any issues with it. Um, I know a lot of people run them for like Baja chassis now and so, you know, rear chassis. So I got that. This thing's like feather. It's like a feather compared to the stock, uh, metal one. Sorry, hopefully, uh, I said, I'm not the best at uh, videoing here or one hand. Ooh. So bear with me, guys. Um, oh, whatever. I'll set this off for now. I'll put it later. Um, also, like I said, this thing is running 1823 gears. Um, I did pick up 1922. So that should give me a little bit more top end. I don't want to go too much more in because, like I said, this thing's heavy as shit. Um, so, like I said, I got the front bonehead RC, and then I picked up the uprights carbon fiber bonehead RC. So, those basically are these. Get rid of the metal ones. So, I mean, these aren't light. Um, so, I got these. These are also carbon fiber. And then I did pick up a... RC Max Tuck to 5 chassis, which is also lightened. I don't know, I think they say like 30% or whatever it is. So I don't know when I'm going to do this project. Like I said, just because the weather's starting to get nice. Um, I don't know, but I'm looking forward to this. With this, it should be pretty good. And then if I ever do the big bore on, I'm pretty much ready. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Did I get anything else for this thing? No, I don't think so. Like I said, I haven't I haven't ran since I did the uh, Vertigo uh, one degree toe zero camber, um, and I didn't run it with these tires yet. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to shoot for maybe June. Like I said, it's it's hard, man. I don't want a vehicle torn apart when uh, when you actually get a chance to run them. You know, like in Illinois. You know what I mean? You never know how the weather is. So, so I got that, um, oh, one, oh, and I did pick up a, uh, a UFC, um, a basher clutch, 8,500 spring. Um, I do have an FS clutch in here with an 8,000 spring. I believe it's an 8,000 spring. Uh, that works really good, but I picked up, uh, one of these, so I heard really good things about them. And it's a little higher RPM. So I figure with changing the gear for more, a little bit more top end, this will have a little bit more, uh, you know, basically stall weight. Um, so it'll release it, you know, it's only 500 RPMs more, but every little bit counts, I guess. So we'll hit, see how that goes. Um, also, I did pick up a, it's used. I got a really good deal on it from one of the guys on, uh, I think it was the Vector Group, honestly. Yeah, I think it was the Vector Group. Um, I got a used Axis rocket stand. Um, I just got it today, actually. So, just messing around with it. Uh, I got it with, uh, I got it for a really good price. Um, I got two top plates for it. 
uh, the five T top plates. And then I got the Vecta top plate with the swivel on here. So, but still really in good shape. You know, some scratches here and there, but this stuff is thick. So, so let's see how that goes uh, with the plate. And then, uh, uh, I'm sure you guys know, this is my 5T uh, OVR 47. I just put on, I've had this since, uh, what was that, Black Fry when uh, DDM does the Black Fry sales. Um, the ADI setup. I just I just installed it now, believe it or not. Um, like I said, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just been crazy. My life's working a lot. I'm working a lot. Uh, you know, you get some time off. You don't always want to go hang out in the garage. You know, you kind of want to just relax. But, um, I don't know. Like I said, the weather's getting nice here, so... Trying to get back into the swing of things. And, uh, yeah, this is a really nice setup, this ADI setup. Um, I'm trying to think of that's it. Oh, also, I'm going to try some new fuel this year. Um, and I want to, I can, I'm going to give credit to Steel City RC. Uh, it's VP ethanol free. It's 94 octane. I don't run anything crazy. Um, I don't know. I I I start. I ran these when I was really into. I got 100 octane. I didn't really notice that much of a difference. So, um, so I got four gallons of this. Um, like I said, it's just it's you know it's not race gas. It's 94 octane and it's uh, ethanol free. So I'm gonna give that a try uh, this summer. Um, so yeah, the only thing I, like I said, I changed the ADI, so I put an ADI setup on this, this one, I, uh, went down a gear and the Vecta is going to go under the knife eventually. Um, this thing, no complaints after the, the gear swap. I like it the way it is. I also picked up a, uh, a Vertigo 20 cause I run a Vertigo setup in here. Um, so that's like a 20 tooth, but I kind of like, I like the top speed. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Like I, I like that because I don't know. I let them rip for a while. I don't know. And then, uh, the Baja 5SC, um, I mean, it was a, what was that last winter project? I don't know. Both of these, I think were last winter project. So I haven't done anything with this one. Um, this one and probably the, the low C5T and I don't know. Maybe the Vecta will be my next ones I take out. It's hard to take too many vehicles out. A, I don't have the room in my car, but, um, you know, um, I, don't know, I always like bring a few. You never know if one's going to break or gonna cause you issues or whatnot. So, um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I haven't done anything with this one. Well, I mean, this one I built it last year or whatever, last winter or two winters ago, sorry. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think of anything else. I don't think that's about it, guys. Um, well, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, got any questions, hit me up in the comments. And uh, hopefully, with Memorial Day weekend, I can get a, a decent running video or a few videos. And hopefully, my phone doesn't go in slow motion. Because I was going to leave it, but man, it was like five minutes of like barely anything so i might forget that i just shortened it but this is the first one i ran on the video and this one um it, i don't know it didn't go in slow motion so i don't know if i hit something i don't know I'm trying to put it in the phone stand or whatever um yeah but that's about it hopefully uh like i said get some more running videos and uh go from there um like i said if you guys have any questions or whatnot or thoughts Feel free to hit me up, man. All right, guys. Have a good night.